And I, look, obviously on, on one level, and, and this is one of the points that, that I pick up on in, in the article, the whole kind of noise around this has been absurd, that fundamentally he's being accused of having friends. And how dare he, the monster, he's got friends that he likes to see, that he hasn't seen for a while, that he's missed. But of course it, it feeds into the context of this, and the context is of two years of disappointment, the context is of, of the patience from the club running out a little bit, and, and with his continuous injuries and so on, and the fact that he hasn't really been able to contribute. And of course, the other part of the context is, is to look at the reasons in which uh, certain elements of the media have felt the freedom to go and attack him and to go and attack him with this uh, viciousness, uh, with this directness. And of course, that doesn't happen entirely in a vacuum. And that partly happens because, as I say, there is a sense of freedom to do so. And uh, Real Madrid are in a position now, according to reports from, from one of the papers and, and a particular journalist who's very, very close indeed to Florentino Perez, the president, they are now prepared to sell him. Now, of course... The problem is there's a big difference between being prepared to sell someone and wanting to sell or sell, mm. some, sell someone and then finding a club that will pay the money for that player. Now, Eden Hazard has been likened to Gareth Bale a lot over the last three or four days, and I think there are some parallels there, but a lot of it is absurd. But one area where you can liken him to Gareth Bale is, yeah, that's fine, but you want to sell him, who's going to pay for him? Mm. How much? Do you really think you're going to recover your investment on him? And of course, the answer to that is no, you're not. Jules, that's just it. What do you think of what Sid is saying? Have we seen the last of Hazard at Real Madrid? And if so, where could he end up? No, I agree with what everything said, Sid said. I think that the one thing that could maybe save him, certainly on, on paper, is Zinedine Zidane. We know how much Zidane wanted him. And if Zidane remains as a Real Madrid manager, which is a long shot in itself, but I think if he stays at the club next season, he will maybe be able to protect Eden and keep him, keep him with him. If Zidane decides to leave or get sacked or whatever happens in the next, let's say, month or so, then I think it, it will become really, really hard for Eden to stay at the club, although he wants to stay. Again, this is the, his dream. The move, the dream move, really, was to play for Real Madrid one day. And he's been a, an absolute nightmare. But I think I agree with Sid. One is... I think it's hard for him to, to stay anywhere. And, but two, where is he going to go? No one is going to pay 100 million euros anymore for someone like him who's been so injury prone for the last two years, who's 30 now, who's on huge wages as well. At a time, PSG would have given pretty much everything to get Eden Hazard at the club. They tried many times and he always said no. But now they're not going to come back for him. And I don't know who will in the big clubs. And again, I think we could have another Gareth Bale. Sid, you've said in your article that Zidane and Hazard are a package. Is that true? Yeah, but I'm really glad that Jules picked that point up. I think, I think it's very significant, this. And I, I think it's significant when you look at... And look, I'm going to hold up my hands here and say there is a risk sometimes that we read too much between the lines. There is a risk sometimes that we see those kind of political divides as being, as being permanent and not necessarily being in a state of flux, which of course they are. Um, but, but Hazard is very much the player that Zidane has protected. Zidane has tried to put back in the team as often as possible. Zidane has defended at an institutional level. And up to a point, I think their futures are entwined. And, and, and Jules is quite right to suggest that, that one of the things that can protect Hazard is Zidane. The problem is that because it comes together, actually the, the, the disappointing performances from Hazard are held against Zidane to some extent from the club hierarchy. To some extent, there's a sense of, of Zidane having to almost resist some of the pressures from above to continually put Hazard into the team. And so I think that's a, a, a really quite significant question. I must confess... I'm not completely convinced that Zidane continues next year. And I think that does have a knock-on effect on Hazard's future. And equally, I think some of the pressures about Hazard's future have a knock-on effect in terms of Zidane's decision about his continuity or otherwise. And, and I think the two, think the two men are not necessarily a pack in the sense that they're completely undividable. I think it's possible that one stays at Madrid and the other doesn't. But I think, I think their, their futures are very definitely connected. Uh, Jules, correct me if I'm wrong, you were at the match on Wednesday, you were at Stamford Bridge, you must have seen this live from your spot on the sideline. When you were watching it unfold, did you know immediately that the reaction that we've seen over the last 48 hours is, is what we would get? Did it, did it almost look like that to you right away? 100%. I mean, from where I was sat and I was just going down to be pitched out again to do the, the flash interviews after the game. And I saw Kurt Zuma and Eden Hazard and then Edouard Mendy was around as well. And when I saw Eden laughing, I was like, oh no, not now. And he should have known better. He's a professional. He's been in this game for, for long enough to know that the cameras would pick it up. And maybe he did on purpose. I, I don't know. I, I certainly not have been uh, told that. But I, could, I, I saw it straight away and then I knew that he would 
a scale like this because like like she was saying, they needed a scapegoat and it was so easy to, to pick on him and to attack him for, for that. I mean, I also had on, on Wednesday night someone calling me quite close to it and other saying, hey, hey, you know, he also ran, he's the most, the, 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 the Real Madrid player who ran the most against Chelsea. So he cares, you know, he, cares, he really fought for it and it didn't happen for him. But so, you, so, you know, maybe, maybe try to, to change the agenda a little bit. I mean, okay, it's good. He ran a lot and he was the Real Madrid that, player that ran a lot against Chelsea. But what he did at the end was far too much serious to just to try to compensate with the fact that he ran more than anybody else on that team. And, and I think it's, it's a lost cause now if you want to defend him in Spain or anywhere because the damage is done. And, and when Chiringuito <laughs> and Pedro Royal is starting like this, it's never a good thing, trust me. Sid, I guess if you're a Real Madrid fan, the thing you're most upset about is that Hazard himself doesn't look that upset to have just lost a Champions League final. But as you write in the article, that obsessive competitor, it's not really Eden Hazard, is it? It never has been. No, and, and up to a point, Real Madrid must have known that. Uh, and they would have known that when they signed him. They would have known what kind of player and what kind of person he was. Bear in mind, though, that despite not being an obsessive competitor, despite not being the kind of character, for example, that Cristiano Ronaldo is, for five years at Chelsea, he was absolutely fantastic. And so if you get the, the, the performances with that same personality, then you accept the personality a little bit more. Um, I, I think as well, you know, when, when you look at what happened after the game, I think there's lots of different ways of looking at it. One, of course, is to say that he shouldn't have done it. The other is to say that maybe he shouldn't have done it, even if it's purely from the point of view of window dressing, playing to the gallery. You know, I don't think there's a terrible crime in having friends and, and being happy to see them and, and laughing with them, even in the context of having just lost. But of course, you have to know that there are sensitivities. You have to know that this will be picked up, as Jules rightly says. You, you know that the cameras are, are on you. And so at that point, I think you, you, you have to, if only from... The, the, the perspective of cynicism and self-protection, you have to know that if you do that, there will be consequences. Now, that's not to say it's right. That's not to say it's not horribly overblown, because it is horribly overblown, but I think it's also fairly predictable. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.